Hello, good morning and welcome back to our channel, Kinta Font de Pippa. And we've had a busy week here. So on Wednesday, me and mum went to the hospital, but unfortunately we couldn't film that. And they made some tests because I've been having some stomach issues. And we have unfortunately found out that mum has osteoarthritis, which means her spine is crumbling. And we think that has been brought on rapidly due to the tick bite. But on a more positive note, I did some modelling this week for a good friend of ours, Charlie. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the merchandise that I was modelling, there will be links up here and in the description below. But stay tuned because I will be showing you how to make some goat cheese. But now over to Dad to show you how to fix the puncture we got on the Ellie Glide. So the old bike's feeling a bit deflated this morning with a puncture in the rear tyre that I got a few days ago. We've just been so busy. I haven't had a chance to do it and whilst it's cool in the morning because it's about quarter to nine now and show some of you guys how to fix a puncture on your bike first of all we're going to start taking the rear wheel off and what's normally it's better you put the bike upside down which is what I'm going to do now so one of the first things to do is to this is the power or the the signal wires that go to the motor in the back there's a connector here and I'd open it very carefully because it's full of lots and lots of little electrical connector pins in there and I should think they're very easy to bend when you shove it back in there's an arrow on the side so make sure they line up and there's two cable ties here that hold this connector to the frame of the bike I think it goes without saying careful you don't cut the cable and only the cable tie like that Seems a bit of a faff having to take that off, but it's an electric bike. go that's the wheel out quite funny that I had a, an old first aid kit but it uh, I'd used a lot of the, the contents of it so I've reutilized this little bag which goes on the handlebars that gives me a little multi tool when I go out riding so I've had this tin about 20 oof, probably more than 20 years now that's what I used to take with me on the mountain bikes there's sandpaper in there I've got a huge puncture patch here which you can cut to shapes. Spoke keys, glue, chalk, little blocks of chalk which you put on over the patch once you've put the glue on. I've got valve removers and different bits and bobs in there so you can see there's old patches, bits of sandpaper. There's the valve, it's almost easier to remove the tyre at the valve. So then the tire can come in here so you put the first key in here you want to find it close to a spoke so you can bend the wheel careful you don't pick the inner tube up obviously if you bend that down like that and the little hook on the end of the tool goes around a spoke to hold it for you you normally only need two to take these off so we'll get this in here there we go and that's pretty much the pressure release now there we go And this has got a heavy duty tube that I put in it. Oh, I think this is probably going to be a puncture from a little thorn or something like that. Because I was only going down a track with no big rocks in it and I didn't hit the tyre. So, uh, and the tyres are very, very thin on these electric bikes because it keeps the weight, the inertia down in the, in the wheel, which makes it easier for the, um, the electric motor to turn the wheels. Right, what I'm actually going to do, because I think it's a puncher from the thorn, is I'm going to take this out, keep it over the position of the wheel the way it came off. Right, well I just got my pump off the frame of the bike, and the reason I said keep the, the tyre in the same position, is when I pump this up, if I find a, a hole, which I'm assuming I'm going to, it'll tell you roughly where you'd expect to find the thing that punctured the tyre, and then we'll check the inside of the tyre to make sure that we either remove it or, it or it's gone. So, Ah, found it. 
and that's why I don't know what's up with this rim on this bike but it's done it twice now we call that a snake bite uh, in bicycles because there's a split there and a split there like a, a snake has bitten it that's not good I don't know if you can see that there's one well, in fact look it's gone right through you can probably see my finger through that slit there so we've got two splits we can fix that and that's why the tube was not blowing up just then and I was thinking it was my uh, my pump not going on correctly so I now know that it wasn't a thorn it was a pinch flat I obviously did hit it in some way now I've got here I used to buy these online various different sizes of patches obviously I've got the, the bigger ones left now but I've got two here four here rather and I'm not sure if these are going to actually do it I'm not sure they're going to be big enough they've got to be large enough they'll cover a lot of the split that one won't be big enough Typical, you never have the right size, do you? And I can't put one over the lot, it'll be too much for the tube. So I think what we'll do is we'll go to my my one here. There's a Stanley blade in my kit. And I can just cut my own patch to whatever size I want. for that one and another one the same size and now I've got two separate patches next step is to rough the tube up with some sandpaper which I've got here and if it's ever if the punch is ever next to this this ridge line here where they form the tube it's a good idea to sand that ridge flat down as it's often where you'll get a pun punch a leak if it's next to this you don't have to take it all the way down but it's a good idea to sand sand it as smooth as you can always sand a bigger area than you think you're going to need I think you guys must be able to see the difference between the shinier part of the tube and the rougher part so we'll do that side and then we're going to do this side that's more than good enough so what we'll do there keep it nice and flat on your knee get my patch there that should go over there a treat so now glue and again like the sanding always put on slightly more glue in a bigger area than the patch in small circles What we used to do at the end it's going off is just touch it with your finger which roughs up the surface there we go <coughs> there's my patch let it go tacky off the backing of the patch which is often easier said than done almost got it I can just feel the lip on the side there we go there we go try not to touch the the adhesive side you get one shot at this so make sure you get it right in the the hole right in the center of the patch and then with the patch you pull it to the outside and you stretch it like this so this is how you stretch it
and we've got the excess glue here around the edge you'll often find the little plastic puncture kits you have have a little rough patch on the back which is for grinding your chalk on I find when they're on the cheap plastic kits they never work so I just use the standing knife flick off some chalk like that and then rub that chalk and it will go and the chalk only sticks to the glue and then it stops the glue sticking to the inside of your tyre so that looks like a good patch that side let's go for this side make sure there's no chalk from the other patch on there I've got another tube of, uh, of glue here so like the other one I'm going to peel off the backing There's the second one. Now, unless there's some others, this should pump up. Now the tube's pumping up. Strange, though, isn't it? Don't over-inflate it until a few minutes later and there's my two patches on there normally you'd put this in a bit of water but often when you're out mountain biking you don't have any water around I'm happy we fixed that I think Molly will be happy I fixed it so using an allen key I'll let the air out and it's always good to leave a tiny, and if it's a brand new tube, I was going to say, it's always good to leave a tiny bit of air in an inner tube when you're fitting it. Just like that. There's, there's no pressure in there. In fact, that's actually probably a tiny bit too much. Like this, it's good enough. Don't put them in when they've got absolutely no air in them if you buy a new tube. Always put a tiny bit of air in it run your fingers around inside the tyre so you could feel any any thorns or anything like that brush everything to the bottom of the tyre if there's little bits of grit in there and then you make sure everything's come out and there's no rubbish left in there because obviously any tiny little bits of sand or something like that could eventually cause a little puncture in the tube find where you've got your valve again which is up here so Pull the tyre back like that, there's your valve hole, the valve of the inner tube, push that in there like that, lift up the tyre so it comes over the inner tube, obviously making sure you don't pick up rubbish on the tube when you're putting it in, and the reason you've got some air in there, look, because it's keeping that tube circular and generally I can actually fit these on by hand without the use of the the tube tool I might have to use it at the very very end but the reason you've pumped the tire up a tiny little bit if I was using this to put the the, the tyre back on like this because this is how you would normally do it what it does is it stops the inner tube getting under this and this pinching the inner tube and causing you another puncture when you're refitting it so always put a tiny bit of air in there there we go and that's the tyre back on go a fixed tire obviously the side with the gears needs to go to the chain lift up this part of the chain bring the wheel forward and lower it like that 
and the wheel drops in like that. Be very careful you don't abuse this cable here because it's, it's a fine electric cable. Make sure the wheel's fully fitted into the, the little grooves at the back which support the wheel. You can give it a little spin to make sure that all your brakes are, are correct and everything's moving freely. There we go, that's put the gears back in correctly. We've got to do up the, the nuts. Might help if I've got the right spanner. Obviously you want to make sure these the nuts are nice and tight, which these are now. So, well, there we go. That's me fixed to puncture. There we go. Put the display back. Pretty good. In this week's vlog, I'm going to be showing you how I make cheese. <laughs> So before we start making cheese, obviously we have to collect our milk and what I'm going to be doing here is washing her teats with some warm water and some of my handmade olive oil and coconut soap so I know what is in this soap before I apply it to her boobs. Wash all the dirt off and I'm going to start milking. do is we're going to squirt the first milking into this bowl as we personally I don't like to collect it because of all the bacteria that sits in the teat once I'm blocked just to make sure that I can end up with the cleanest milk possible. So now we have thoroughly cleaned her udder we can start milking. can see here comes Eddie and Tilly their milk.
So I'm going to start by using a rice cooker filled with boiling hot water and two teaspoons of vinegar as a sterilizing solution for my cheesecloth and my stirring spoon. So I'm going to place that in there. It's all fully submerged. And then I will leave that in there for about 10 minutes. Whilst that's sterilizing, I'm going to be mixing up some of my rennet. Normally I would use thistles that we have growing here on the farm and I would mix them with water to use as a vegan rennet option. But unfortunately the goats have eaten all of that and I'm not going to be selling this cheese. So I have got here some animal rennet which is from the stomach of a baby calf or lamb and what I'm going to be doing is mixing some of that with some water for a solution for our cheese so let's do that and now this we will use when we start with the milk. Here we have a saucepan that I have boiled water in to sterilize the pan and the spoon that we sterilized earlier along with our cheesecloth. And here we have two liters of our filtered clean goat's milk, which I'm just gonna pour straight in here. So I'm gonna turn the heat on and heat this to 38 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to be stirring this as it comes up to temperature as not to scald the milk on the bottom of the pan. And throughout I will be checking the temperature with a temperature gauge. I don't know why this is looking funny on camera. And we are currently at 31.3 degrees Celsius. to 3.7. I'll start to creep up quite quickly now. So we are currently at 36.7 degrees so I'm going to currently turn the gas off and add in our rennet. And you don't want to stir this for any more than a minute or otherwise you'll split the curds. So I'm going to leave the lid on this for half an hour and keeping it at the 36 degrees Celsius it needs and we'll come back when it has split curds and whey. So 30 minutes has passed and I'm not sure if you can see but it has split into curds and whey so I'm going to scoop the curds out and I'm going to place them into my disinfected sieve with my cheesecloth and my spoon.
now I have the majority of the curds out, I'm going to pour the rest in. So now what I'm going to do is I will cover the cheese like this and I will leave it for about two hours for the rest of the way to naturally strain out under the weight of the cheese. Two hours has now passed and I'm going to be transferring the curds back into the pan and mixing in some pureed garlic, some chives and a salt and pepper mix. So let's get on with it. wipe down my mess. I'm going to add in my garlic, my chives, and my salt and pepper and give it a good mix. Now we have mixed the cheese so it's nice and fine. I'm going to take a cheese mould lined with parchment paper and another spoon to tightly compact the cheese into the mould. So now I'm going to take the cheese out of the cheese mould and I'm going to show you how I package our cheeses. So I'm going to take it on the top and I'm going to be it. So now I'm going to leave this in the fridge for about half an hour and then I will serve it and give dad some crackers. Well, all I can say is Molly's done a really good job. I guess I'm a bit biased, but uh, believe you or me, it's it's really good. Well done, Molly. I'm glad you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed this week's video, so don't forget to give us a like, subscribe, share our video with family and friends, and we will see you back here next week.